Jesus' suffering on the cross is a picture difficult to understand. He was betrayed by a friend, arrested and falsely sentenced to death, but Jesus never looked back. He kept going. Jesus could have avoided the cross, called down fire from heaven, or summoned legions of angels to rescue him, to save him. But Jesus was not interested in saving himself. He was all about saving you. Every detail of this torturous path to the cross was part of God's plan to bring you to him. We're all broken. We've all messed up and have all made wrong choices. And no one had to teach us as a baby about anger and selfishness. We just came out that way, sort of a sin covering. But on the cross, with his blood he shed, the Bible says Jesus blotted out our record of sin, nailing it to his cross. The blood of Jesus washes away our sin covering. And his blood is our ticket. Our ticket to enter through a new door, a forever relationship door with God. So what do we do with this great news? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, it's not enough to believe in Jesus with just your head. You must believe with your heart. Now, there's just one person alone at the foot of the cross. It is you. What will you say to Jesus? Say, thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for me. I'm giving you my heart today, Jesus. I do believe you died for me and that you were raised from the dead for me. Please give me a new heart and a new life right Jason Blood Church coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you. Going to do a video. Hope you find it to be a blessing. Uh, we're going to do it on the fall feast days, the Feast of Trumpets. And we're going to examine those feast days and, and look at the menorah. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, thumbs up. We're a group of Bible believers rightly dividing the word of truth. Pay attention to the salvation message at the beginning of the video. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 is your gospel. Jesus died, buried, and rose from the dead. The blood is available to atone your past, present, and future sins. Get saved today. It's not a works. It's just a heart belief in what Jesus did on that cross. Amen. So we're looking at the menorah here. We can see the fulfilled feast, if the, if Jesus is fulfilling these in order. Passover, of course, at the Passover, uh, he was the Passover lamb. He was killed on the cross. Amen. And unleavened bread, he was buried on unleavened bread as well. And he rose from the dead on first fruits, which is the third uh, from the left that you see there uh, of the menorah going left to right and then in Pentecost 50 days later um, at Shabbat which is Pentecost the Apostles in the upper room received the the Holy Spirit at Acts chapter 2 verse 1 those have been fulfilled the unfulfilled ones are the fall feast Feast of Trumpets Day of Atonement and the and Tabernacles could it be that the Feast of Trumpets is raptured the church I don't know uh, again it's what if Jesus could also fulfill this left to right, as we just mentioned. He could also do the three on the left, left to right, and then the three on the right, right to left. So that's another possibility that some people believe in. I, I don't know the answer. And again, he doesn't have to do the rapture on one of these feast days. So the Feast of Trumpets largely has been called Rosh Hashanah in terms of Jewish modern practices. However, that there, there's much more to it. It's the Jewish New Year. Uh, it is the first of the fall feast, and it's called literally the head of the year, um, first of the year. And Feast of Trumpets points to many different things, one of which is the rapture of the church when the Messiah will appear in the heavens as the bridegroom coming for his bride, his church. Now, it doesn't mean that the rapture will happen on Feast of Trumpets. It just sort of points to the rapture, whenever the rapture date would be. Again, I'm not dogmatic on any one date. I do like the Feast of Trumpets as a possibility, but that doesn't mean it's what the Bible says or what's going to happen. So the interesting thing about Feast of Trumpets, it's not always on the same day. It's one of two days, and it's a two-day celebration. It will be held the first day of the seventh month, and it's a day of rest with no labor, like many of the other feast days, That and there are sacrifices that be made, and there's the blowing of the trumpet, and it's literally 
there's no reason given for it. Um, there was no specific reason given for the act, action of blowing the trumpet. And they blow a shofar, it's a ram's horn. Um, there's burnt offerings, one young bull, one ram, seven male lambs, each a year old. The meal offering is mingled with oil. The sin offering was one male goat to make atonement for their sin. So that's under the law, that's not us today, but it's what the Jewish people have practiced. So it's a little backdrop about it. Uh, it, it did have five different names traditionally. Uh, Leviticus 23, 24. Zechariah Torah means memorial of Trump or the shout for joy. The phrase is found in Leviticus 23, 24. It's a remembrance, a remembrance of blowing is what it means. Yom Teru literally means a day of blowing the trumpet. It is biblically designation, designation is found in the book of Numbers, chapter 29, verse 1. Rosh Hashanah, that's again, we talked about that, the head of the year, the new year currently in Jewish society. Yom Hazakaran, this is a rabbinic name, which means the day of remembrance and Yom Hadin, this is another rabbinic name and tradition, which means the day of judgment. In the Jewish beliefs, all Jews on this day are to pass in judgment to see if their sins will be forgiven or not. Those are the annual sins of the Jews. So that's a little backdrop about the Feast of Trumpets. Uh, we know the rapture verses. I'm not going to cover those. Let's examine the idiom that no man knows the day or hour. And that's found at um, you know, many different passages, like Matthew 24, 36. But of that day and hour, no man knoweth no man, no not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. And you hear this used to be like, you can't know the day of the rapture. Well, we don't know the day of the rapture because God doesn't want us to is the real reason. But Christians lack understanding of these Jewish idioms, and so we're going to reference some of them. And, and this one, I think, may point to the Feast of Trumpets as well, uh, and culture and the fall festivals in general. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost, Luke 19.10, so Jesus spoke to Jews using language and structure when he was when he walked that they would be familiar with during their time. Much like if I were to talk to you guys today, I would use language which would be modern today compared to maybe 300 years ago. It would be different. And so Luke, when I read Luke 19.10, Jesus spoke of two things, his deity by calling himself the subject of the prophet Daniel's vision and his mission by calling himself the one God who spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai as written the book of Daniel. And so when they when when he spoke this verse, they understood that. We today wouldn't understand that unless we went back and look at the scripture. And so the it, there's idioms tied to the feast of trumpets. So the Jewish calendar is different than our calendar. It is 30 days each month unlike, you know, the our Gregorian calendar has, you know, 28 February, 30 or 31. So there are differences in that cycle. And it's based on the moon. The Jewish calendar is based on the, the lunar cycle, the moon cycle. In a period of, of slight less than 30 days, the moon goes from darkness to light and back to darkness again. The Feast of Trumpets begins when two witnesses are sent out to see the new moon on the seventh month. It's the only festival set by the new moon. And that's why it's, it's really no one knows the day because nobody knows when they're going to spot, spot it. So the Jewish idiom that says no one knows the day or hour could be referencing the Feast of Trumpets, and it might fall on, you know, either, usually in September or October, um, the Feast of Trumpets does annually. And so that's a little backdrop on, on it, something that, you know, a lot of people don't understand in, in, in our culture, because we're not, we're not ourselves Jewish by nature, and we do not celebrate these, these feast days. And so these witnesses that go out to see the moon, the Sanhedrin used to follow, they had criteria that they had to go out, but they, they never arrived at the same time the two witnesses would go out to separate parts and they were and they were to come back individually when they witnessed the, that first sliver of the new moon in, in that seventh month. And Jews had no ways of determining God's appointed times or mo mohadims because they had to wait for the sign of the new moon in the seventh month. Now today we have Stellarium and all these fancy programs and science can pretty much predict the new moon sighting. And so the Jewish day does start at a different time than our traditional day does. At sundown, you know, the Jewish day starts at sundown and ends in the daytime. That's which is not what we do in the Western world at all. And this is important because, you know, it could determine sort of the rapture and the twinkling of an eye. You see that in the rapture verses. It could also refer to a specific time of sunset or sunrise. And no one knows the exact day or hour because you don't know if it's sunset or sunrise, which twinkling of the eye would it be? So there are two twinkling of the eyes. There also would be multiple days. It could be the Feast of Trumpets. So that's why 
that those Jewish idioms are interesting in terms of the Feast of Trumpets. It doesn't mean that that's the rapture. So if you examine in the twinkling of an eye in the verse, which is 1 Corinthians 15, 52, and I'll read it in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised and corruptible and we shall be changed. So also you see trumpet and there's trumpet sounds tied to the Feast of Trumpets, obviously with the shofar blast. But Hebrew and Greek words were used by Paul. And the word rest in Hebrew is riga, R-E-G-A, which is an interesting word in Hebrew. It means to, to be both at rest and to set in motion. We have nothing like this in English that I know of. Reva, R-E-V-A, can be defined as the time it takes for a hand of a clock to move, which is very fast. So two is the Hebrew word for motion or riga, R-E-G-A. The Hebrew word is pictured as the twinkling of an eye. Paul uses the Greek word atomos for riga, riga. So when he was writing this in Greek, the word atomos is, is the same word for riga in Hebrew. And so in that 1 Corinthians 15, 52 verse I read, when referring to the coming of the Lord, to the Hebrews, riga is a motion so fast that you would hardly notice the movement. In English, a blink of an eye is almost instant, and this makes logical sense because for those alive to, to be changed, to be transformed into a glorified body at the rapture, and for it to not to be painful at all, it should take place very quickly. If we look at 1 Thessalonians 4, 18, and make any sense by saying, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So the rapture is a comforting event for us, not, not something hurtful or painful or scary. And then we saw the last trump in 1 in 1 Corinthians 15, 52, at the last trump was referenced. The last trump is not a vague thing. Again, it's another idiom. That phrase, last trump, is a Jewish idiom which represents a specific moment during the Feast of Trumpets. And Apostle Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth, so this is in 1 Corinthians, is actually a clear reference to the hundredth trumpet blast of the Feast of Trumpets. It's called the last trump. And there are a hundred trumpet blasts during the Feast of Trumpets, and the and the teka gudala is referred to as the last trump. So that last 100th trump blast is a long, carried out blast, and it's known to be as the last trump in the Jewish tradition of Jesus' time, which makes me, is one of the reasons why I think the Feast of Trumpets is a, is a good like, likelihood for, for a rapture date. It doesn't mean it will be. So if you look at the different trumpet blasts during the Feast of Trumpets, we'll, and we'll look at them, um, the tika is a long single blast, and it was straight, plain, smooth, continuous note, and it is to be symbolized the expression of joy and contentment. The shavarim is three short blasts, a combination of three broken notes to symbolize weeping. The, the, the turura, extremely short blasts, which are a combination of nine staccato notes in a very quick succession of short trill. This symbolizes trepidation, sorrow, and sobbing in, in the Jewish tradition. And then the last 100th shofar blast, the tika godala, which means the last trump. This one symbolizes the hope of redemption. Well, what happens when we get raptured? It's a redemption of our, our bodies from the corrupted nature of it to the new perfect nature of it. And that final 100th shofar blast, it, it's very long. It's the final note. And it's a very long sustained note as long as the trumpeter can hold his breath. That's the tradition on it. And it is known as the last trump. And so that's, you know, that to me is is you know one of the what ifs is is this the possibility for a rapture is the feast of trumpets is are the some of these idioms i'm mentioning and and jesus christ we know he filled the first three spring feast days i went over that earlier on and we know in Le leviticus 23 4 notice the phrase holy convocation the phrase is hebrew is a hebrew word is mekaru kadesh better translated holy congregate con convocation and rehearsal in other words, God's appointed times are actual holy rehearsals set apart to reflect events to come. Jesus is saying to pay attention on these days. Now, that doesn't mean that's the rapture, and it doesn't mean that it's this year or this, or it's even the Feast of Trumpets, but they are all to be holy convocations. You're to pay attention. Something important could happen. We're to look forward to those as possible times of Jesus Christ's return. If you need prayer requests, leave them. Uh, this was just a good background study on what what is the Feast of Trumpets. I will do the same with the other fall feasts as we get closer to them. God bless and have a great, great day.